Welcome back. Uh, time to look at the headlines on the pages of today's National Daily. It's glad to say we have joining us is Chris Kainde Wando, chartered mediator and conciliator and regular on this segment of the program. Good morning to you, Mr. Wando. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me this morning. All right. All right. Uh, let's uh, get into it and look at the headlines from the pages. We'll start with um, headlines from the Nation newspaper this morning. The leading one there, what Tinubu told APC uh, screening panel by aid. I was told journalists were barred from covering the screening, even though I saw journalists um, outside the lobby of the hotel interviewing some of the uh, aspirants. Um, so I do not know, maybe... Uh, some papers expect to have access into the room, but um, uh, an aide told the media uh, what the aspirant Tinubu said to the screening panel. The writers to that story, uh, former Lagos governor Amechi, Umahi, Bakare, eight others screened, uh, Shibajo, Lawan, nine others to face Odigye Oyegu panel today. Jonathan, not listed. At the top of that front page, EFCC charges Okorocha with 2.9 billion Naira fraud. Um, this means that he was arraigned before a federal high court. Titan Trust completes acquisition of Union Bank. Why visited Wiki Saraki Tambol by Atiku. Peter B picks Labour Party presidential ticket. Details on page four and five. 2023 polls, rising food prices, threaten economy, IMF warns. And at the bottom of that front page, abductors free Methodist predate two others, 11 injured in Kogi. Moving over to the leadership this morning. The big one, 2023 presidency, North rallies round a tiku. Guso presents ex-VP to IBB tomorrow. Wiki accuses Southern PDP governors of betrayal. Rivers Governor Ugoi Ikbazu Okoa tipped as running mate to Atiku. Obi merges Labour Party flag bearer. Still with the leadership, court returns Okorocha to EFCC custody. Train attack. New video shows Ango Abdullahi's son still in terrorist den. IMF projects 22% inflation rate for Nigeria in 2022, Lord have mercy, uh, we should add 22% inflation. It's quite a, a scary prospect. APC panel screens 12 aspirants. Tinipu vows not to step down for anyone. Despite presidency's denial, Jonathan may be screened today. This is what the paper is saying. <laughs> Monkeypox, NCDC confirms one death, 21 cases in nine states. FCT. And FG targets $176 billion from Customs Modernization Project. Those are the headlines on the front page of the leadership. Over to Daily Independent, the big one with a kicker, Atiku's emergence. Pressure mounts on PDP chairman, are you to resign? And writers, we can't activate that agreement now, says Governor Jimmy Agbaje Kola speak. More from the Daily Independent. PDP presidential primary. Some southern governors helped deny region ticket. Wiki. Some southern governors helped deny region ticket. Wiki. Peter B wins Labour Party's presidential primary. Gunmen attack a number of broadcast station burn vehicles building. Really, really sad. Maritime crimes threatening opportunities in Gulf of Guinea. This according to President Buhari. Kidnapped Methodist church prelate. Others released. Alleged 2.9 billion naira fraud. EFCC arraigned Sokorcha on 17 count charge. Well, of course, he has since been remanded in their custody by the judge. APC Presidential Screening Committee gets petition seeking to disqualify Tinubu. Atiku on reconciliation drive. Mitsuike, Saraki, others. And 2023 presidency Aquiramadu shops for party meets brick wall at a 
PC. Those are some of the headlines on the front page of the Daily Independent. Over to the Punch newspaper, last paper for this morning. It has the big story there with the kicker, presidential primary screening. APC questions Tinubu, Umahi, Bakare, others and foreign citizenship consensus. And the following writers demands answers on bankruptcy as parents records with EFCC, ICPC, CCB. Party snubs NDLEA's request for drug test. I presented my manifesto to panel, Borofis and uh, Tiku worthy, but PDP days are gone, says Bakari uh, Buhari to receive screening report. Manufacturers spending on alternative power source or source to 425 billion Naira discos boycotted. I can't be second class citizen, says Wike. Atiku begins reconciliation drive. Method is prelate, others regain freedom 24 hours after abduction. Okorcha engages five SANs, court hears bail application today. And uh, at the bottom of that front page, Obi would have been my presidential running mate, Kwan Kwasu. Lagos sergeant killed my inspector husband with sword widow. And Disco's, Genco's, others revenue shuffle rises to 1.6 trillion naira. Let's uh, welcome at this point Chris Kendi Wando. Chris Kendi Wando, thank you very much for your time. Let's start with um, the stories on the front page of the Punch newspaper. And one that is personal to me, um, His Eminence Dr. Samuel Kalu Uche, the uh, uh, prelate of Methodist Church Nigeria, his chaplain and also the bishop of Oweri Diocese is finally being freed by abductors who picked them somewhere in Abia State a uh, day before. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? The Charing News. Uh, um, it's good that they are being released and um, we thank God for their safety. And um, some other people that have been picked up and uh, abducted or kidnapped in the past have not had that luxury of being released. Uh, fresh in our minds uh, are those that were kidnapped or abducted uh, after the train attack um, along the Abuja Kaduna. Uh, route and to now you still see videos of them they emerging from the forest and um, they are pleading for their life and begging for uh, assistance so that they can be released. It's going to weeks, several weeks now, and uh, it seems that we've not making any headway at a point. They gave the federal government seven day ultimatum to uh, pay up or um, assent to their request. Uh, but um, a few days ago, it, we heard that they have. Uh, a back down on that, and the um, negotiation we had is still on. And uh, it is, I believe, that all abducted or kidnapped Nigerians, wherever they find themselves, will have the opportunity of being released to their family. So, for me, it's good news. Um, but that also brings to the serious problem we are having, the security challenges we are having in Nigeria across board. It's no longer in the northeast or northwest, but across Nigeria in the south. Uh, in, in the south, south, in the southeast, southwest, um, south, uh, north central, every part of Nigeria is being uh, a threat at this time. People are not safe. When you get out of your house, you don't know whether you come back safely. So that to me is the uh, question we should be asking ourselves. And if we put into place um, the promises made by this current government in 2015, one of the cardinal points which promise made to Nigeria is to make Nigeria safe. That are we safer than we are? They say we are, but we as Nigerians know that uh, that is just a mirage and untrue. Hmm. Uh, the, the church had um, started asking its members and all well wishes uh, for donations when uh, it was revealed that the abductors of um, uh, His Grace, Dr. His Eminence, Dr. S.K. Uche, had uh, asked for 100 million uh, ransom to release him. Uh, the Bishop of Oweri Diocese and the, uh, the prelate's um, uh, uh, cha chaplain. Um, what do you think, what does it say, as far as you're concerned, that the church had already started trying to put the money together? Very quickly. It goes, mm. it goes to show that they don't have much uh, uh, trust in the security agencies because um, whenever you're in, uh, your family member is kidnapped, you're on your own. When you even report to the security agency, yes, they promise to do something, but at the end of it all, 
we will be told to go try as much as possible to uh, negotiate with the uh, bandits or kidnappers so that uh, your relative will return safely. So they have taken it for granted that the only option for them is to be able to raise this money and make sure that uh, um, these people are released. But good enough, uh, they've been released. So nobody knows whether any ransom was paid uh, or whether it was the security agencies that secured the release. But the most important thing that the report is coming in that um, they've been released. And that to me is the, is the good news there. All right. Um, let's go down to Port Harcourt, where uh, here's a week, Governor of River State arrived to a hero's welcome of sorts at the um, Port Harcourt International Airport, Omagua. And he, was, uh, he drove in a convoy motorcade uh, uh, triumphantly, you will call it, to the government house in, uh, in Port Harcourt. One would have expected it would be scenes of, um, you know, sorrow, uh, anguish, you know, and uh, a sober mood you know, at the government house in Port Hackett or in Port Hackett. But um, it was, a, it was a, a mood of defiance. The governor of River State in a defiant mood. You know, he alleges, alleged betrayal. Um, he also said that um, he can't be a second-class citizen in Nigeria. He said that uh, by his performance, you know, and the fact that he was able to take it all the way and take a tickle down to the wire, he had passed a message to them. You know, he was referring to them. What are your thoughts on uh, Wike's... Um, uh, what he has had to say when, after breaking his silence uh, in Port Hackett following uh, the PDP presidential primary? Oh, the, for me, um, it's, a good, um, it's a good one that um, Governor Wike finally has come out of the shock of the defeat at the PDP primary in Abuja. Don't forget, he was one of the front runners uh, in that contest. And um, I, I listened to some of his speeches. But, uh, I would just say that politically, I thought that um, Governor Wike is, uh, is a well-grounded politician and he should know better. Uh, but when I listened to his speech, especially the one concerning South uh, South, South governors, who he said he never believed that we uh, gang against him, then uh, I, I would just look at it from the point and say, Probably Governor Wike is a learner because in politics you can expect everything to happen. Don't think that uh, you have it or or you have the feet covered. That uh, as we say in law, um, it's, it's either you you are living uh, in fantasy or just believe that anything can happen in politics. In politics, forty-two, in fact, thirty minutes is is as good as uh, changing the dynamics of. Uh, uh, of any situation. And we saw that at the, at the MK Abiola um, Stadium in Africa. We are a few minutes after uh, his speech, the governor of Sokoto State, who many believe is a very, very trusted friend of uh, Governor Wiki, uh, came out and announced his withdrawal and asked his supporters uh, to vote for Alaji Atiku Abubakar. Nobody saw that coming. I think, uh, I think we should, um, Governor Wilke should be talking more of that than uh, blaming his fellow uh, South South, South, South um, governors. Don't forget also the South, there was a South South governor there, uh, Governor Udom, um, is uh, from South South. So what makes him believe that uh, he has more rights to be good from the South South than Governor Udom? So, but the fact is that I, one thing I, uh, I like about the way he, he has gone about the, uh, his uh, person after that loss is the way he's like, Governizing uh, support for Atiku. Atiku visited him yesterday, visited Saraki, Anyam, and so on. That, was, that means that reconciliation is on. And PDP seems to be poised to uh, be unified. During that um, uh, primary, um, Governor Wilkins said that even if he loses the um, primary, that he's going to support anybody uh, that emerges. And I think that is what he's trying to do. So to me, he's a true party man. And I hope that they'll be able to reconcile themselves and get themselves ready for 2023. All right, you're saying he's a true party man. And before we move on, um, part of his anguish was that uh, uh, some of the governors from the South, South, and Southeast uh, in the party uh, sort of threw their weight behind Atiku Abubakar. There's a particular governor whose name I won't mention, but I'm sure you're aware, um, who is said to have told his the delegates from his state to vote for Atiku Abubakar, and whose name is really. I think at the top of the list as far as uh, Atiku's running mate 
is concerned, possible running mate is concerned. Um, uh, you know what I'm talking about. There was a Southern Governors Forum meeting in Asaba Delta State, the backyard of this particular governor, and they declared that they will support a Southern presidency. That was in May 2021. In July 2021, there was another meeting of Southern Governors in Lagos, where they also signed a, a communique declaring that all 17 of them will support a Southern president in 2023 election. So, um, and this communique was read by um, Rotimi Akirudulu, uh, Governor Rotimi Akirudulu. Now, so, so if WK hears that some governors had meetings and decided to tell the delegates from their state to support Atiku, how is he to feel? Kofi, in politics, there is no permanent friend. What we have is permanent interest, just like international relations. So, um, uh, uh, Governor Wike should just go back and uh, continue doing what he's doing and governing the people of Piba State and giving the best of uh, representation. Um, he's, he's calling on uh, and uh, uh, calling on um, people and castigating people. Uh, but also, what were the utterances of Wike before the, uh, the primaries? Wike was going on a spree of the marketing of most of the aspirants that is talk so much about Atiku. He went to Anambra State and told Anambra people that P2B was not electable. It's on video. I'm sure you must have watched that video. He told them that it's not electable, that it's just a waste of goods. And so what do you expect when you go around the marketing people? Like, yes, it's politics. We have a bet. You don't, I believe that part of the problem of Governor Wiki probably would have gone more is because of the way he talks. He talks, he, he says he from the heat. But at times, as a politician, you have to be very, very diplomatic in the way you talk and the way you address people. So if you come out uh, in a way and manner that people don't seem to trust you and believe that they cannot be able to trust this person, then it's a trust, it's for me, it's a trust deficit. And that is what happened to him. He has the capacity to be able to win. But he was talking too much and talking down on a lot of people. He saw what he said about the governor of, um, of um, Edo State, of Basaki before that election. So I do want them to back him. It's not possible for them to do that. So I thought that he would have just um, stick to what he can do and what he can be able to uh, present and what he can do for Nigeria, rather than just going around and calling names and making all sorts of so that in itself can't end up. But I believe he has lost, uh, he has learned his lesson. And the next time uh, he'll be able to uh, behave more uh, like an elder as a politician, which he, he is. Um, he has moved on, as he said, and um, he went on to say that uh, those that betrayed him, especially from the South South, the nemesis will catch up with them. Uh, well, let's wait and see what happens. But the PDP definitely is moving on. I think we should be start, we'll start, we should leave PDP and start looking at APC, uh, which is already uh, conducting its own screening um, now. Uh, the drama that trailed the uh, EFCC's arrest of uh, former governor of uh, Imo State, Senator Rocha Zokorcha, was is quite well documented. Um, it was something close to what we see in the movies. Um, the man has yesterday been uh, arraigned before court uh, where he was remanded in EFCC custody. We're told that uh, he has engaged the services of not less than five senior advocates of Nigeria um, as the court head. Uh, um, heard from him. Today he'll be caught to be hearing his bail application to see if he will be granted bail to be able to go home to his family. What are your thoughts on that? The charges against him are bailable. They are bailable. So he has a right to uh, bail uh, if the courts find it necessary to grant him bail. Secondly, also the fact remains that he had his case a, a day in court and that is um, uh, as part of his uh, fundamental human rights uh, as a citizen of Nigeria. When, if you are arrested, it is expected that within 24 hours or 48 hours, you should be charged to court. And EFCC seems to be doing the right thing. Uh, is it 22.9 billion or 3.1 billion now? Don't even know which one. But the fact remains that uh, Rocha, Rocha, uh, Rocha Sokrocha, uh, my former governor, uh, is having his day in court. And it is for him, there for him to be able to prove uh, to the court that the allegations leveled against him uh, uh, we are forced and be able to provide that evidence. I read somewhere too that he also he also going to court or he has also instituted an action against the Attorney General of the Federation and the federal government over his arrest. But let's see how this pans out. Today, the court will be hearing um, his case once again and application for bail. And I think that 
that application, if granted, will allow him to go home today and probably participate in the screening of um, the presidential aspirant because the APC has just marked, marked two days for that. Yesterday and today, about 12 to we are screened yesterday. I think and the remaining may be screened today and that will be it. If he misses that, then I don't know whether they're going to do a special uh, screening time or period for him. If he's not, that means he's going to be sat from the um, uh, presidential primaries of the APC as it were. But the good thing is that um, he is having his day in court. But for me, uh, as an emo like, it is high time that uh, we, we continue to uh, look at our leaders and wherever they find themselves, believe that tomorrow there's only be tomorrow. When you are there as a governor or senator or whatever, you believe that you are all in all, not forgetting that tomorrow, we have a say in my a place that uh, HED may, HED may means that tomorrow is pregnant and nobody knows uh, what is going to do, whether it's going to be a baby, a girl, or a baby boy, even a still bat, nobody's done. It's only God that knows. So, but it's good that um, he's been brought to court to answer uh, to some allegation on um, alleged fraud against my state. And let's see how this goes. I, li I, li I like the way you put it, my state. <laughs> my no, no, nobody is, no, nobody is state. like we say, <laughs> like we say, nobody is dragging your state with you. You can have it here. Yes, so. All right. Um, uh, let's stick with politics. Uh, the front page of the, uh, the Punch newspaper has a little story tucked at the bottom left corner uh, where the presidential candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party and former governor of um, uh, Kano State, Rabi Musa Kwankosu, is saying that uh, Obi would have been my presidential running mate in a party tried to, you know, um, uh, try to woo uh, Obi with some online posts and all that. And the expectation was that he would join them. But people were asking if he joins them, what will happen? Because uh, Kwankosu is there already. And now the man is saying Obi would have been my running mate. Is Kwankosu uh, crying over spilled milk and, you know, I mean, the man has already won the uh, Labour Party presidential ticket. So what's the hula balo about? I watched that interview live last night on one of the national TV. And uh, I was just uh, smiling. Uh, he's trying to pick uh, OB, thinking of picking OB at uh, his VP. Yes, I know that there were a talk. Uh, he had a talk with OB, really OB left um, um, PDP. And when he was talking, I was seeing myself. Why will uh, OB be his VP? Why not him also being the VP of OB? What gives him the pressure that he's more popular than Peter OB? Or is it because he's the owner of the, the fact that you are the owner of a party or you set up a party does not necessarily mean that he must be the presidential candidate of that uh, party. And that is the problem we've always had in Nigeria. So for me, uh, it was laughable uh, for co that said, yes, you might say that he's popular, but if I look at it, I don't think that nationally, that's my personal opinion. I, with the way things are going and the kind of support that is growing for P2P, I don't think that Kwakwansu is more popular than P2P presently. I may be wrong. Yes, he's popular in Kano State, um, where he was a former governor. Don't forget, he was a former governor, he was a former senator, he was a former minister for defense. But that in his state does not make, necessarily make him, um, uh, and, uh, I, I don't know, a, a universally accepted person. But, um, the the talk breakdown and um, and it will be moved on and it was yesterday that he was unanimously uh, uh, elected uh, at the primaries of Labour Party as the presidential candidate of the Labour Party and the uh, people like uh, 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 Professor Pat Utomi stepped down for him and one other young man Peter be I think is moving on uh, holding the flag of Labour and let's see how ANPP also come back. but that problem, so we get the a presidential ticket of his party. Uh, but there is going to be a lot of really realignment in the politics of Kano State with N a a a NMPP. Uh, you see that um, uh, Popanso and Shekarao, since they are close rank, to be able to face the tsunami called APC in the state, developed with foreign governor of Kano State, Kanduji, and which is why two of them came together and see whether they can raise so power out of the hood of APC from 2023. We are watching and looking. All right. We are watching and looking. So let's go over to more papers from other newspapers. And uh, uh, with um, the Daily Independent, it has this uh, headline, Atiko's emergence pressure mounts on PDP chairman IU to resign. Um, we can't activate that now, or that agreement now, says governor. 
uh, Jimmy Agbaje, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Why would, you know, why would it be expected that Ayu should resign because Atiku emerged? Uh, yesterday there was a vi video of him visiting, uh, leading a delegation to visit Aminu Tambual, and uh, he called Ati Aminu Tambual the hero of the, of the convention. Well, uh, I think in that way, the PDP is in kind of daily match now. Uh, because the impression was initially when they had the convention in, in last year, towards the end of last year, before this year, uh, to elect the uh, uh, chairman of the, uh, their political party. The impression was that the, uh, the position of the chairman will be zoned to the north, while the presidential ticket will be zoned to the south. But the way it turned out, it seems that that was jettisoned for whatever reason. And um, now you have a presidential candidate and a, a, a chairman of a national chairman of the party coming from this. That has never happened before. So even if it did, it must be for a short period. So PDP needs to be looking at that. At the point that we have before the uh, primaries, we, it was said that the chairman said we not resign, irrespective of whoever, where it comes from. But it is going to be a very, very tough call for um, the PDP now. And uh, never had uh, the, the issue of, um, uh, of um, sharing this uh, political office has always been the presidential candidate will not come from the same place with uh, the national chairman. So we are waiting to see whether the APT, um, sorry, the PDP will uh, by this time allow the, uh, the national chairman, who is from the north, from Benue State, to step down in order to make sure that. Uh, somebody from the south takes over the leadership, or whether the uh, um, PDP will go ahead with this current uh, formula uh, towards uh, 2023. But it's a, a very, very tough call, as far as I'm concerned. All right. Um, uh, your kinsman, uh, former deputy, um, your kinsman and uh, former um, Deputy Senate President E.K. Kwemado, he's uh, shopping for a new party, according to what we hear. Um, and we're hearing he's met a brick wall at APC. So we have a, a headline from the Daily Independent. Uh, E.K. Kwemado shops for party meets brick wall at APC. Um, it was quite a surprise to uh, see that uh, he could not make it in the PDP in Enugu State. We also were equally shocked to see what happened to Hinaya Abaribe, the two ranking senators and two leading politicians from the Southeast. Uh, your thoughts on the political fortunes of E.K. Kwemado, having to leave the PDP and trying to join the APC and still finding it difficult. Is it, is it over for him? It's just a conjecture. I, I don't know whether that's true. You know, in the uh, press, uh, we in media guys, uh, uh, journalists have a way of grabbing and seeking uh, attention to uh, our papers. Uh, it's just for, for easy reads. I don't see a uh, uh, um, moving or going to pick up the ticket of um, uh, of APC. Don't forget that APC have had, uh, they've had their own uh, primaries and they've already uh, picked their candidates for uh, for senatorial seats and ultimately for governorship. So. Uh, I doubt that. Yes, he made a big wall. Uh, uh, he contested for the governorship of his state, and uh, he lost. And uh, I also believe that uh, naturally also he lost, and uh, that has been it. But uh, Ike Gomado has been in Senate for how many years? About five times, times or I don't know, I can't remember now. And uh, uh, since, since, since 2003. Can, sorry? He's been there since 2003. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Well, you can imagine the number of, uh, just like um, Abaribe. Abaribe is, is a bit lucky because um, after he lost that, uh, uh, he, he lost uh, the attempt at becoming the governor of um, Abia State. He moved to Abia and he was able to pick up a senatorial seat, not even governorship that he was eyeing. And now he'll be scoring that out in 2023 against the governor, uh, Okeze of the PDP in the Senate. So it's an interesting time. And I told you that in politics, uh, earlier on I said that in politics there's no permanent friend. What you have is interest. And to me, as a person, it goes to the level of selfishness of our leaders. The, the fact that they want to remain relevant. Some of them don't even have a job again. All they do is politics. So if you lose an election or a promise, whatever, 
if you know that you are well grounded, you can go back to your business and continue. It does, it does not end that you must be a politician. That is why we have always said that politics in Nigeria should be seen as a part time job so that people don't take it as a full time But here, they've taken it as a full time job, and that is what we're saying. But interesting time ahead in 2023. Okay. Interesting times indeed. Um, let's go over to the leadership this morning, the leadership newspaper, and uh, it uh, spares some space uh, for uh, the APC presidential uh, screening as it's ongoing. Yesterday, 11 uh, aspirants screened out of 23. Like you said, today more expected to be screened. Um, uh, we heard yesterday that Dr. Goodluck Jonathan's name was not part of the 23 names to be screened, the three uh, aspirants to be screened. But um, uh, uh, a headline from the leadership says, despite presidency's denial, of course, President Buhari had to come out to deny uh, that he was supporting or pushing a Jonathan agenda. It says, despite presidency's denial, Jonathan may be screened today. We were told yesterday the man was in Italy. Is this possible that he'll be screened today by the APC? The last time I checked, his Twitter handle. Uh, he posted that uh, there's a Milan in Italy. So I don't know how somebody that is Italy would, but except he, he flew in this month uh, from Italy. That is one. Two, when the APC released the name of um, uh, candidates to be current to be paid, Good Lord Nathan's name was not there. I also didn't see the name of uh, the governor of Central Bank. His name was not there as well. So to me, I think that is a popular already. But, um, except if you see it's going to give you some level of waiver, the man has come out to say consistently that um, he didn't pick the form, probably some people picked for him, and uh, he has not come out categorically to say whether he has joined APC or whether he's going to be a, a candidate or an aspirant for APC in this presidential election. The man has not come out categorically to say, all he has been saying is, oh, I'll make my views known and rest of it. If the screening ends today and the name of if you also remember that during the PDP uh, primaries on Saturday, if you look at the program of event, the name of Good Luck Jonathan was very, very prosperous. You, you could see the picture as me, which means that he has not left the PDP. He has not, there's no evidence to show that Good Luck Jonathan uh, is no longer a member of, if you're not going to be a member of a party, you will come out to say, and from what we've heard, he has not come, to, come out to say that. So, you cannot be a member of PDP and APC at the same time. It's not possible. So, uh, for me, uh, it's neither here nor there. The president has come out to deny that they are part of this uh, uh, attempt to bring in Good Lord Jonathan. What I've always asked is that, what did Good Lord Jonathan forget as Asolok that is going back to uh, to pick, knowing what the APC, uh, uh, leaders of APC did to him in 2015. He was called clueless. He was called all sorts of manner of names. I was told that uh, he's not worthy of being a president. So what has changed between 2015 and 2022? I don't know, Kofi, if you would ask me. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. And that's uh, the, the much we can take right here on this segment. But uh, Chris Kennedy, Wando, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. And do have a nice day. All right. Thank you very much. Time to take a break. And uh, we'll look at what happened today in history. When we return, we... Zoom in to a first major conversation on The Breakfast.